We are living in very exciting times. And based on Moore's law, Harvard researchers are predicting Bitcoin will reach over $100,000. But we all know Bitcoin could actually exceed over $1 million, especially since there are more millionaires in this world than there are actual Bitcoins. But which Bitcoin are we talking about? And when Bitcoin Cash forked away from Bitcoin BTC, it came with an upgrade which has created a game theory problem that could cause Bitcoin Cash to crash or freeze into a standstill, leaving only one true Bitcoin. So how does the mining difficulty connect to the mining profitability? How does this consistent or fluctuating difficulty adjustment relate to the blockchain stability? And will Bitcoin Cash become a frozen blockchain or will miners choose ideology over money? Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr. You're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. So there's been a lot of news happening in the world of blockchain and a lot of excitement be to be had as well. We have a solid Bitcoin price of around uh, $4,300, $4,400, and I think, generally speaking, the expectations of the space is that it's really eyeing that $5,000 price point. Now, this isn't financial advice and I'm not a financial advisor. There's a lot of risk with what is happening in this market and there's a lot of news coming out about all the risk that's happening in this market. Let that risk be from what's happening with the uh, competing blockchains that are vying for attention or let it be from the competing attention of the government and financial regulatory bodies who are really seeking to understand, control, to monitor each of the customers and users in this blockchain space. So uh, in this video, you know, we're gonna get right into it. We're gonna just have a little bit of fun with talking about the price possibilities of where we see this going with Bitcoin, uh, just based on some news and what some other people are saying. But more importantly, we're gonna be talking about what's happening with Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash and uh, what's happening currently in the community that could cause major issues for Bitcoin Cash, uh, especially, you know, in this world of Bitcoin, uh, you know, Bitcoin is already rocking away. It's already it has so much lift. It's headed toward that moon. And that's not to say that something great could happen for Bitcoin Cash to ca catch up. But as we're going to see in today's news, uh, there's definitely some reasons for major concern around Bitcoin Cash. And we're going to be getting uh, deep into that, talking about this in you know the comments below. So uh, we're you know going to get right into it. Hit that like button, uh, you know, to help other people find this video. Leave your comments as you uh, have your comments or your questions. But let's pop into the market, look into the news, and let's discuss. Okay, so where are we? So starting over here at coinmarketcap.com, we are looking at a total space of 865 currencies, the ever-growing number of cryptocurrencies in this world. We have a total market cap of $160 billion, about $10 billion more since we last checked in, I believe. 24-hour volume of $5.3 billion seems to be a new, high, healthy number. Uh, we used to be in that three or four billion range. We were, as you know, touching on the eight and nine billion uh, dollar range, 24-hour trading volume, and so this five billion dollar range is just a lot of money being traded in the past 24 hours alone. And uh, of all of this being traded, the all of this currency inside the space of 160, 100,000 million billion dollars, just a, a lot of money. It would be amazing if this is 160 trillion, but right now it's just 160 billion. 45% is the Bitcoin dominance going strong. And so what do we have going on? So Bitcoin alone, $72 billion. And so we're seeing a per Bitcoin price of almost $4,400. Uh, 
you know, still 16.5 million Bitcoins out there. So 16.5 million, there's just not a lot of Bitcoins in this world. There's, there's more Bitcoins uh, in this world uh, right now. There's only so many. There's uh, more millionaires in this world that we're going to see in a second. Uh, a lot happening. Uh, Bitcoin Cash over here has just been on the steady decline. And if you just see Bitcoin has been going straight up, Bitcoin Cash has been going straight down. And this is after we had this Bitcoin Cash spike, uh, you know, seven, 10 days ago, um, you know, which we're going to see in this data a, a little bit more in, in just a little bit. So uh, before we get into that, I just wanted to just warn everybody with the major warnings that are happening in the space, talking about the security of Bitcoin and blockchain technology. The number one place that people are getting hacked is right through their own front door, right through their email, or uh, just getting phished, or, um, or, or, their, or their phones being hacked. So this is just someone on Reddit who's saying how they were awarded with 200,000 BTIT coin, mis, uh, uh, mis, uh, spelled Bitcoin, right? <clears throat> And all they had to do was to claim it was to send 0 0.02 Bitcoin. And so this is just a scam. People are getting these emails to try to lose their Bitcoin, to try to lose their Ether, try to lose their cryptocurrency. Be really careful about clicking on links or, or just believing anything that you are reading or, or seeing on the Internet or text messages or emails coming to you, even if it's coming from, say, Coinbase because it could look like it's Coinbase, but it may not be Coinbase. It could look like my Ether wallet, but it, it may not be my Ether wallet. So just have due diligence before you click on any links. And, uh, and, and uh, whenever you're visiting a website, uh, just be really careful about that. And also the second thing you wanna be careful about is your phone number and your phone and losing access to your phone and therefore losing access to a lot of very important accounts that you have. Uh, if you lose your phone, then this could be a way that people could get access to your email account, to your Coinbase account, to different uh, accounts that you have. And uh, and so, what do you want to do? You know, th they recommend that off uh, the Google Authenticator is the recommended app because this way the uh, Google Authenticate Authenticator app is unique to your specific phone. And the, 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 the two-factor security of that app can't be ported to a different phone. You can also contact your phone carrier and ask your phone carrier to, to put a do not port uh, notification to block, potentially block, any porting of, of that phone number. You know, we've seen stories in the past of uh, social hackers, social engineering hackers and hackers being able to still trick the telephone representatives to port these phone numbers but generally speaking have a separate number if you can for your two-factor security uh, use the Google Authenticator app for the two-factor security um, you know you have to think ahead of time if you were to lose your phone what would you need from that phone in order to access all of your accounts that's a question you want to ask yourself pretty immediately and you know prevent being in that situation of never being able to access your Coinbase again or any of your, um, you know, if say you're using an exchange or any of these websites again because you were to lose your phone. Uh, just word of caution out there. All right, cool. So uh, a couple of fun websites out there, some experts uh, predicting that Bitcoin could be worth up to $20,000 in the next three years. Uh, and so we're looking at the, the price now, we see it's about $4,400. And these people are just recognizing that this isn't like Amazon, the days of Amazon and Google. These are the days of blockchain technology. And this is a limited technology where there's uh, only so many of these tokens available. And that the, the demand for the Bitcoin is increasing exponentially and it only has one direction to go, and that direction is up. Uh, that the, the, the folks in this article, like Ronnie uh, Moas, is uh, predicting that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and so $20,000 is a very, very low prediction, especially when you look at what other folks are saying, like Harvard researchers who are comparing the Bitcoin price increases to Moore's Law 
we've mentioned this before, but just to have the extra research on top of this. And so they're simply predicting the, uh, the $100,000 per coin. So if we were to pop this open a little bit, what do we have here? So we have uh, 2018 right here. This would place it at about, let's say, seven, $8,000 of Bitcoin. And then in uh, late 2019, we're looking at 15,000 of Bitcoin. And then when we're hitting the 100,000, so this is predicting in 2021, we're looking at $100,000 Bitcoin according to this Harvard research. So this is really interesting to look at. And so different people are using this as sort of a gauge to, uh, you know, sort of use as a crystal ball to figure out where are we, where could we be in some sort of measurement of uh, between here and the moon. And uh, this was also just a, a, a quick fun article that was just talking about the number of Bitcoins that exist in the world. And so there's only going to be a maximum of, maximum of 21 million Bitcoins ever. And how currently, according to different data, uh, the estimates are that there's about 35 million millionaires in the world. And so if each of these millionaires wanted to purchase one Bitcoin and there was that fierce competition for just one, you'd imagine that very easily that demand can uh, cause, you know, the value of the Bitcoin price to go up, uh, you know, with uh, an, an exponential curve. So, but that's Bitcoin and this is Bitcoin and this is really talking about the one true Bitcoin. And so what is the one true Bitcoin? Um, and so when we're talking about Bitcoin, we have Bitcoin and we have Bitcoin Cash. And when Bitcoin, uh, I guess, um, forked with, or uh, you know, upgraded and forked with SegWit, or upgraded with SegWit, then we had Bitcoin Cash fork uh, off into this other blockchain. And when Bitcoin Cash forked off into this other blockchain, that's when uh, they also added different code to the Bitcoin code base. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so part of this uh, that, that happened is that uh, with the Bitcoin code that's been added, it's been affecting uh, the difficulty for Bitcoin Cash. And this uh, has been affecting the uh, uh, competitiveness for the miners of the miners who want to mine Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin BTC because Bitcoin Cash and BTC are both mining using the same uh, algorithm and that requires the same technology, uh, the same hardware, the same roughly software to, to run, to be hashing the network, to be securing the network, to be mining blocks and to be, uh, you know, minting new Bitcoins on that network. So... Bitcoin Cash has been more profitable to mine than Bitcoin BTC on multiple occasions over the past week or two. And this has been creating this, this new dynamic within the Bitcoin ecosystem. And it's not beneficial to either coin. It's, it's creating these fluctuations in the mining that's creating inconsistencies in the, uh, the, the speed in which new blocks are being mined and the backlog in transactions. Uh, which could otherwise, you know, not be there. And so uh, Bitcoin Cash should normally uh, not be affecting Bitcoin too much. But what is happening is that we have this uh, system where uh, Bitcoin Cash um, has the fluctuating uh, Bitcoin difficulty. And when we look at the Bitcoin difficulty for the miners to mine Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash versus how much the token is worth, then that's creating different incentives for miners to mine Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin or vice versa. And so uh, what's happening is that financially, it may be in the best interest for these miners who have this very specialized technology, this this very specialized hardware that's using, you know, probably expensive electricity and they have a financial incentive to be mining Bitcoin because they'd be making just more money 
more cash, whatever, uh, relative to whatever, whatever their, their fiat money is or however it is that they pay their rent and their electrical bills. But uh, in order to keep, you know, you know, manipulate or manage the Bitcoin cash difficulty in the sweet spot of where they want it to be, uh, you know, the miners are essentially being put in a position where they're going to have to go against their own interests, their own financial interests short term in order to, you know, uh, help manage the Bitcoin cash difficulty in such a way that it keeps uh, Bitcoin cash healthy. So uh, additionally, part of the problem is that the Bitcoin cash block rewards uh, do not exceed the Bitcoin block rewards. And then this is going to happen sooner or later at some point. And as the Bitcoin cash difficulty exceeds what the block reward is going to be worth, uh, at, at some point, the miners are likely going to leave. Um, You know, then, the, you know, we just get into the different math and how this is triggered and then how the difficulty is just fluctuating back and forth. It creates the cycle of uh, of just uncertainty, uh, not just for the miners that are looking to create revenue and create efficiency for this investment that they have. And, uh, you know, all this hard work sitting in a room, but um uh, you know, which which Bitcoin they're going to keep alive and which blockchain is going to be um, succeeding, you know, because it has the breath and the energy and the life flowing through it of which it centers around these miners and the miners all o over the world mining Bitcoin in order for, you know, the the uh, proof of work algorithm to be running to mining the transactions to be mining the blocks, which is the processing of people's payments. Uh, additionally, you know, keeping, you know, with the with the transaction fees in Bitcoin Cash, keeping the Bitcoin Cash transaction fees extremely low um, with the transactions with the Bitcoin Cash uh, happening less frequently. And then also, uh, you know, with the uh, Bitcoin Cash uh, transactions also happening uh, at sometimes with greater frequency and sometimes less frequency. Uh, what they're saying is that the halving of Bitcoin cash can actually happen much, much sooner than the halving of Bitcoin BTC. And so if the halving of uh, Bitcoin cash happens within just a, a, a year instead of having to wait, you know, three years or so, then the block rewards are going to get decreased even further to, uh, you know, from 12 and a half right now to, to what, six and a quarter, I believe. And then the amount of new revenue going to the miners who are mining Bitcoin cash would then drop even further beyond that. You know, so inside this article, there's several different reasons what is going on with these difficulty adjustments for Bitcoin cash and how it's causing these discrepancies in the network. So if we go over to fork.lol, this is taking a look and this is demonstrating the information for us visually so we can understand better what we're talking about uh, and what's going on. And so up here in orange, what we have here is the hash rate, the network hash rate for Bitcoin BTC. And then over here in this blue, violet, uh, purple, we have the hash rate for Bitcoin cash. And so we see the hash rate for Bitcoin cash increasing uh, pretty sharply uh, when Bitcoin Cash was really coming online and we see, you know, that had to come from somewhere. And so it didn't come from lots of new equipment that came from the existing, uh, you know, uh, as ASIC miners that were mining Bitcoin going into Bitcoin Cash because the value of Bitcoin Cash has increased uh, so much. It went from, I think, uh, 0 0.088 to uh, point one five and uh just to, the, the price went up uh you know very very uh well for the people you can see all right here in purple when bitcoin cash was existing the hash rate wasn't there because um it just wasn't profitable for the miners and once the new mining uh difficulty adjustment kicked in then the hash rate kicked in because then all the miners wanted to mine those blocks 
But then what happened, we see these major dips and these major fluctuations of which there's two of them right now where the difficulty adjustment is either, you know, it's, it's in a sweet spot and then it goes very, very high, which then makes the profitability of Bitcoin Cash very, very low. And so when the profitability goes down, which is down here, then the miners go away. And where do those miners go? Well, they go back to Bitcoin BTC. And then, uh, and then that's causing huge problems for the Bitcoin Cash network. And then it uh, is adjusting quickly, uh, quicker than Bitcoin, which is more stable because it has the, the steady two week adjustment periods. And, uh, and so while Bitcoin is definitely being affected and we definitely see these fluctuations in, in, uh, in the total moving through time, uh, the, the fluctuations in the Bitcoin cash are just much, much greater. So this is creating, and then here we see the relative hash rate in the percentage total. And so uh, again, in purple, we have the relative hash rate in, in purple. And then in the orange, the yellowish orange here, the, the peach, we have the hash rate of Bitcoin BTC. And so just look at the amount of uh, computer hashing, mining that is going toward Bitcoin, uh, not just overall, but especially in the times of fluctuation. And in these times of fluctuation, you know, it, the, the absence of the, the, the mining for the uh, Bitcoin cash is just a huge concern and a huge red flag. And uh, this really can't be understated um, or overstated <laughs> enough to bring to your attention. Uh, you know, this is just not healthy and this is just a dying heartbeat uh, in a world where cryptocurrencies don't die. You know, and, and definitely anything can, can turn around and, and anything can happen. And it's definitely something to keep an eye on. But with so much news happening in the Bitcoin space uh, for Bitcoin and the adoption and the growth and the, and the network effect of what's happening with Bitcoin BTC uh, across the different countries and the companies that have, you know, just priceless amounts of resources and blood, sweat, tears and value inside the Bitcoin BTC network. And then we look at the mining strength and mining power relative to Bitcoin Cash. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not discounting Bitcoin Cash all the way, but this is definitely uh, created a huge red flag for me in the Bitcoin Cash world. And so then this is being illustrated over here in Reddit with this meme, which I think explains what the previous article was, uh, you know, articulating with, you know, so many words. So this is uh, when a big blocker doesn't have enough miners. And so when, you know, uh, Bitcoin Cash is just, you know, they, they need more miners. We look at how much mining power they have and there's not enough mining uh, power. And so the miners have to choose short term uh, interests, which is, um, <laughs> you know, short term interest is making money. Right. And so the and then the ideology is either mine empty uh, BTC blocks or save Bitcoin Cash from doom. Uh, and that they're just not quite sure what to do uh, in this situation. So over here, uh, then we have what we have. We have the SegWit adoption uh, with the transaction percentage, the number of uh, transactions that are happening across Bitcoin that are including uh, SegWit, that are signaling for SegWit, that are uh, using SegWit. And we just see uh, that number slowly increasing, although it's extremely low. Um, we're definitely seeing, uh, you know, it happen. And so there's there's people are complaining about the Bitcoin fees still that the Bitcoin fees aren't instantly fixed, and you know instantly fixed is not something that you know uh, I don't think is realistic. So let's think about this. You know, back in the 90s, you know, we had computers, and uh, I think most people had a 56k modem. Maybe you had a dedicated phone line. Maybe you had to use your existing phone line, but you might have had the best computer spent one or two thousand dollars for the best computer plugged it in 
to the 56k modem and you're still downloading images line by line you know um it's you know fast now is is relative to fast later and the development of the technology takes a little bit more time in the beginning and then uh, really expands uh, very rapidly later. So it'll be really interesting to see where this goes. Really interested to know what do you think about this. Really interested to hear your thoughts about this uh, mining difficulty adjustment and how this mining difficulty adjustment is affecting the profitability of the miners who are mining uh, Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin BTC. And more than that, what do you think about the consistency and the stability of mining actually even happening on one network versus the other? Because if all the miners just completely walk away from Bitcoin Cash and stick with Bitcoin BTC, whatever those transactions that are there are essentially stuck or just moving very, very slow as the temperature drops uh, because most of that heat, most of that attention goes where uh, you know wh where the value is right and if the we see the value of Bitcoin BTC going from where it is now at forty four hundred dollars going into the five thousand dollar range and then beyond you know it's gonna be I think difficult if not impossible for Bitcoin cash to catch up to you know where it ends up going and the escape velocity if you will of its uh, you know it's it's uh, ascension to the moon so with that being said, tap that like button. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Please visit us on Steemit. If you're not on Steemit, make an account. Visit us on Steemit. Follow us. Uh, feel free to upvote this video over there. And uh, we'll be uh, creating more videos. We have a lot of interesting news coming out. And until next time, I'm glad that we're minting coins. Mm -hmm.